What does a $59 million wedding look like? They had a private concert by the band Maroon 5. People are dragging this photographer for charging way too much money for her photos. Megan and I are getting married in Turks and Caicos. We reserved a block of hotel rooms at a discounted rate of just $1,750 a night, so you better book now. Weddings have gone from simple events held in a church to full-on influencer events. Don't get me wrong, I love a good wedding, love to attend, they're so much fun. But I have noticed that the expectations Expectations for weddings are higher now. People go into debt sometimes to attend them and to throw them. Vendors charge very inflated prices. So today we're going to talk about everything that's crazy about the wedding industry. Weddings have gotten crazy. The pressure on both people having weddings and the guests, it's too much. It's gotten too serious and we all need to calm down. Hi guys, welcome back to my commentary series. Today we're talking about weddings. Wedding season, you know, it starts in spring. It's coming up. Get ready for it. Get your wallets ready. As someone who has filmed a lot of weddings and has also attended a lot of weddings, both as a guest and a bridesmaid, I feel like I've got some good insight on this, especially with the filming of weddings, because you get the behind the scenes look of the entire day. Weddings in general have become more of a status symbol now than they used to be. There's more pressure to have a Pinterest or Instagram worthy wedding that did not exist in the 80s or 90s before social media. You know, social media played a big part in people wanting more extravagant weddings. Let's start out with talking about the cost of weddings because people are spending more on weddings now than they ever have. The average cost of a wedding now is $30,000, but I just know the weddings I've been to cost way more than that. I would assume. And listen, if you have the means to afford a fancy wedding, I'm here for it. I'm all for that. But the issue is more people feel the pressure to spend money on a wedding when they don't have that money. Or maybe they have the $30,000, but they don't yet own a house or other investments. And so really, truly, maybe this is a hot take. That is not a responsible way to be spending your money. But also I get it because there's societal pressure for this to be the best day of your life. This was kind of the premise of the show marriage or mortgage people were given a budget they could spend either on a wedding or a house down payment and it's easy to say okay the house is the better decision financially but more people spent the money on the wedding than the house now a lot of people do get help from their parents maybe grandparents for a wedding and again then i feel like whatever go for it just like have a fun wedding then but i feel like most people don't get the whole thing paid for by their parents. And yet there is still pressure to have a more extravagant wedding than there was before. I think something people don't talk about is now maybe parents are feeling the pressure to spend more on these extravagant weddings when, when they had a wedding, they maybe only spent a few thousand dollars on it. It wasn't that fancy. I know my parents' wedding was really not that expensive. They spent a few thousand dollars. They were kind of crafty about it, but they got married in a church and then they had the reception at the Seattle Aquarium because my uncle worked there so he could hook it up. I think they literally paid $100 for their venue. It was, you know, a low budget wedding. From what it sounds like, they had a fun time. They didn't feel like there was pressure to have a crazy extravagant wedding. I think if today they had that kind of wedding, they might feel like they need to spend more on it. One issue with people feeling the pressure to have a more extravagant wedding is they feel that it's kind of a reflection of them. It's honestly not. A lot of the time it's a reflection of how much money maybe your parents have. Some Sometimes I know people want to have really big weddings to make it feel like they have like a ton of friends. When I know like I've been invited to some weddings where I was like, I feel like I'm a prop for this wedding. Like we aren't that close. Some people just want to have a big wedding to make it feel, you know, bigger and more grand. It doesn't always mean that they're that close with everyone there. Although there are some people that just, you know, they can afford to have a big wedding and they do have a ton of friends and want to be inclusive of that. As someone who has filmed weddings, I've noticed that a lot of the time, the brides at least that have really big weddings tend to be more stressed out than the ones where they have small weddings. The smaller weddings I've filmed, I feel like everyone is just having a better time. And it actually makes sense because there is less pressure. Like there's less moving parts. There's less to deal with, less drama probably. Then the bigger weddings, it, it is more pressure. That And some people want that and are very happy with their big weddings. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to shame people for having any kind of wedding or saying one is better than the other. These are just my observations as a videographer. 
So some of the reason that wedding costs so much now are because there's kind of a wedding tax or a wedding markup. If you tell a vendor that your event is a wedding, expect the price to be doubled at least. Everything from photography, flowers, the event venue itself, it's all more expensive if it's a wedding. I know photographers, a lot of times I see on TikTok are charging five to $10,000 for a wedding. Shut up, it is not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. And I just know that they're not ever getting paid that as a day rate elsewhere. I hire videographers quite often and I've hired amazing videographers for $1,500 for a day and that included editing. And this is a videographer that like is so good, I would trust him to film a wedding video. The wedding tax, the wedding markup is kind of unhinged. Vendors make the argument that there is more attention to detail when it comes to weddings. They're bringing their A game, there's more pressure, the stakes are higher. And that is true, when I film a wedding, there's more pressure, you have to capture that moment. You're on your feet all day, it's honestly not very fun. I don't think a lot of people want to do it, which is why they charge more. It honestly, it's more fun to shoot a more low key event than a wedding, it is. Or to do a brand shoot, especially with photographers, you're not working with models, you're working with regular people, so you have to pose them, it's more stressful. I do think that's part of it. However, I don't think the prices should be as inflated as they are. Like I do think they should be more expensive than other events because it is more pressure and attention to detail. But I think wedding vendors charge like more than three times what they would get paid for anything else. Like it's truly crazy. I've seen even some wedding videographers are charging $20,000 now. You know what? Fine. If they can afford it, then, then sure. But I think $20,000 for a wedding video is kind of crazy, like, no. A lot of wedding photographers will say, oh, the editing takes a long time. I've shot wedding photos and edited them. It does not take that long. It's way longer to edit a wedding video. I've also had friends that get married and the photographer didn't send them the photos for months after. I'm like, it doesn't take that long to do. You can do it in an afternoon. One of my friends also told me that her wedding photographer charged her $300 more for access to the raw files so she could edit them herself. I just think that's so ridiculous because it's not additional work to just send over the raw files. But I know this is very controversial in the wedding photographer space. They get very offended if you ask for the raw files, even though you're paying for the photos. The thing with videography specifically is it is an exhausting day and just not that many people are willing to do it even for a thousand dollars for the day. A lot of the time it's a 12 to 14 hour day. I know a lot of videographers and almost all of them say like weddings was a thing they did starting out to make some money, but something people generally want to get away from because it's an exhausting day. It's not really that fun and you also can't be that creative. So that's a little on why people charge more. Although I do think they charge a crazy amount. There are also times where the service does not change at all, but they truly do just charge more because it's a wedding. Take a look at this Reddit post. It's a makeup artist saying that they normally charge $150 for event makeup, but they charge $500 for bridal makeup. Now this bride lied to her and said, oh, I'm just have, I'm going to an event. So she charged her $150 for the makeup. When she went to go do the makeup day of, she realized it was actually for a wedding. She did not actually take longer on the makeup, but since she found out it was a wedding, she wanted to be paid more. I feel like that is messed up. It's not like you're spending longer on it because it's a wedding. It's just because you know it's a wedding and you should be paid more because people are willing to spend more. If it was a makeup artist who was sticking around for a few hours for photos for touch-ups and that's why they charge more, then that's that makes sense to me. But if they're doing the exact same thing for event makeup and bridal makeup and they're just charging more for bridal makeup, no, that's ridiculous. Basically every vendor from the cake to flowers to the venue charge a premium if it's a wedding because they know that people will spend more. Especially after COVID, there was such demand for weddings that people had to spend even more than they normally would because there's only so many prime Saturdays in the summer. So if you want that coveted spot, you're gonna have to pay a premium which I think is why we're seeing more Friday and Sunday weddings, but that's a whole different topic. In general, I have to agree that a lot of vendors are kind of out of line inflating their prices so much. 
with all of these inflated costs, a lot of people just opt to do what they can themselves, which I think is really smart. So we're seeing a lot more people being like, you know what, I can go to Trader Joe's and make my flower bouquets myself. Or they can find a talented film student to make a wedding video for them. Or they're just cutting some of the services altogether. My friend Laura recently got married and she did her own bridal makeup and it looked amazing. I feel like honestly, like that's the move. She's really good at makeup. Why would she pay someone else to do it? A lot of the times when a makeup artist does your makeup, it doesn't even feel like you anymore. It just feels kind of weird. Why would you want to feel like that on your wedding day? I think there are certain things that people are saying, you know what? I don't even need this at my wedding. Actually, the prices are just too ridiculous. One thing I wish wasn't the norm, but I just don't really see changing is the wedding invitations and saved the dates that are sent in the mail. They can be pricey. This is $300 for just a hundred invitations. And as a wedding guest, okay, I never check my mail and it stresses me out when someone text me asking for my address for the invite because then I know I have to look out for it. I know this is kind of silly, but I just, I honestly wish we could just text or email when the wedding is. I just, I don't really like the paper invitation thing, but at the same time, I get it. They're classy. They're beautiful. Like I I do like them, but I just hate getting mail. I hate physical mail. It doesn't matter if it's a bill or a check. I just want everything to be digital. On top of the already inflated costs, a lot of vendors want a tip too. Can you believe that? I did not know, but I recently talked to a friend who got married and he said, yeah, a lot of the vendors want a tip. They're already charging inflated costs. Now, listen, I do think that the bartenders should get tips. The people who are working for a company where they're not setting the price themselves, I do think that makes sense that they would get a tip, but I do not think you should tip your photographer. They're setting the prices themselves. Bake it into the cost. Popping in here while I'm editing because my friend told me the other day her event planner asked for a tip and also told her to bring $700 cash on her wedding day to bring to different vendors to tip. What? I would not want to deal with that on my wedding day. I just think that is insane. Tipping really is for people who are making minimum wage to make a little bit more. It's not for small business owners to just try and make a little extra on top of it. Just build that into your price. I even saw a girl online where she went to get pick up her wedding dress and they ask for a tip what i mean is this a thing i just didn't know about like you know the dress itself they're thousands of dollars the profit margin is there to pay these people i don't think a tip really makes sense for that i mean but i don't know maybe i'm wrong on that one i'm just confused but not only is it expensive to have a wedding it's also more expensive to attend a wedding this is a factor that not a lot of people talk about but it's likely that a lot of your close friends you don't live in the same city as them anymore every wedding i go to is a freaking destination wedding because i don't live in the same city as a lot of my friends that have gotten married so while weddings are free to attend they really are not cnbc found that 53% of millennials would go into credit card debt to attend a friend's wedding. If it's a close family member or friend, on average, you spend $628 on a wedding. And guests that aren't as good of friends are still spending $372 on average. I used to think of weddings as like, oh, it's it's free, you know, but it's never, no. I feel like wedding gifts, $100 to $200 range, I'm Ubering there. I'm always Ubering. You know, I try and just rewear stuff I already have, but I know a lot of people are buying stuff for events like this. If you have to fly there, obviously the flights, hotel, food, if you're on a trip even. I've never been invited to a wedding that was just like 30 minutes from where I live. It's always at least a couple hours. Even if it's in the same state, it's usually like a little bit outside of it or just like far enough away that the Uber is going to be like a hundred bucks, you know? I feel like that is pretty common even when people are getting married near where they grew up. It'll be like an hour and a half away. So for guests, it is expensive as well, especially if you're a bride. Made. I've seen br- people that have been bridesmaids many, many times now add up the total cost they've spent on weddings and it's quite astounding. Just take a look. This is exactly how much it cost me to be a bridesmaid for the first time. Versus my dress, it was $190 for the dress itself plus $120 to tailor it. Then I didn't already own nude heels, so I spent $120 on some shoes and I also didn't have a formal dress for the bridal shower and rehearsal dinner, so I bought one for $130 and used it for both days. Then there's the bridal shower and bachelorette expenses between gifts, supplies, Ubers throughout, any and all expenses it looks like I spent about $330 here. Finally, for wedding weekend, we all stayed in the same hotel for two nights, which cost $670. So my total came out to around $2,300. Bachelorette parties, we need to talk about this. They have also gotten a lot more extravagant. Did you know bachelorette parties, it used to just be like a one night thing going out in your 
town. And now people are going to Europe, to Cabo. And listen, I'm here for a bachelorette party. I think that they're very fun. I've never regretted the money that I've spent going on them. It's fun. But I will also acknowledge that I have more flexibility in my spending probably than most people and also in terms of time off. Now, if I really only got 10 days a year off from work and I had like three weddings I was going to this year and a bachelorette party, I would start to feel like my whole vacation schedule is dictated by weddings. And I have friends that this happens to. I had a friend who what, went to 16 weddings in a year. And you can't always say no, we'll talk about that later, but bachelorette parties, you know, they are more expensive now. A new trend with bachelorette parties too is having themed outfits. So not only are you spending money going out, doing activities, food, restaurants, and everything, but also you might need to spend money on like a space cowboy outfit or whatever. That for sure did not used to be a thing. In many ways, it's more expensive than a regular trip. First bachelorette I attended outside of my own was in Palm Springs. It was three nights and I spent a total of $965. A couple months after that, I went to Miami for a four day bachelorette trip which grand total was $1,425. This January, I helped plan a bachelorette party in New Orleans for one of my best friends. And because I was a planner, I did take on some additional expenses and I paid $1,536. If you have financial goals that you're really trying to hit and you have this pressure to spend money, not only on this vacation, but trying to cover the cost of the bride, like it's hard, you know? For a lot of people, this is not a once in a life thing that they're going on a bachelorette trip. A lot of people end up being bridesmaids multiple times. So over the course of their life, you know, you're spending thousands of dollars on this stuff. And yeah, you can say no, but that can be weird with certain friendships. Let's just be real here. Brides just need to be self-aware of their friends' budgets. If you are the bitch that is asking your fucking friends to go to Greece for your bachelorette, knock it off. Knock it the fuck off, okay? Unless you are pegging for every fucking thing. You got the plane, you got the tickets, you got the Airbnb. With love to you, Rochelle, I don't want to go to Greece and have to take off time off of work and pay out of the asshole to go to your fucking bachelorette. Like, don't ask them to come to Greece for your bachelorette party if they're not going to Europe ever. I don't have any friends where this is an issue. All of my friends that have had bachelorette parties are conscious of this. We do hear a lot about brides that want very expensive bachelorette parties, but, in, but overall, yeah, I've definitely spent more on Airbnbs and hotels and flights going to bachelorette parties. I'm happy to for my friends, but I'm not gonna lie, it does add up. If I were to look at the number, I probably would go, oh, and it's not just for the bride side, okay? Have you ever been to Vegas? Have you ever been to one of those pool parties and met bachelor party groups where they're spending so much money on a table? It's just insane. I would argue sometimes the groom side spends more on these bachelor parties than the brides. Another thing with being a bridesmaid is the dress. I feel like bridesmaids dresses become a big topic of convo because usually these dresses are kind of campy. They're very specific. You're never gonna wear them again, most of them. I think I have one that I would actually wear again, but almost all of them, it's just for that one day. And I've heard of situations where people are asking their bridesmaids to buy dresses that are like $300, like, come on. Bridesmaids dresses need to be about 150 or below. I would say even 100 and below. An issue that I personally have with bridesmaids dresses is the fact that you have to get them altered. What? These dresses, I'm never gonna wear again. I don't even spend money getting the clothes I wear every day altered. Why would I spend it on someone's wedding? Like, this is just, no. I actually have never spent money getting a dress altered. I just like, I think bridesmaids dresses, hot take, they should have adjustable straps. Most dresses in general that I buy, like has adjustable straps. Obviously there are a lot of different ways that the dress can be altered, but that's an easy one. Like why are they like that? I think that is so annoying. I've started seeing a trend actually where bridesmaids just wear the same color, but they wear totally different dresses. And honestly, I like that. It's less consumption because we know bridesmaids dresses, like you're never wearing it again. So the cost is much higher for everyone involved. But I do think that the mentality around weddings is different. There's a lot of this mentality that like you only get one wedding. It needs to be the best day of your life. And for a lot of people, it's a fun day, but maybe not even the best of their life. I felt really special here on my wedding day in June, but I was also thinking in these moments, are we running behind? I really hope our guests aren't getting bored. How do I connect with this person in the 30 seconds we have? Then the night was suddenly over. 
in what felt like an adrenaline-fueled blur. I honestly think that's too much pressure. That's like birthdays. I feel like it's too much pressure. I already feel weird about it now, and now I feel like it's not gonna be as good of a day as if it were just a random day that happened to be fun. Does that make sense? You can plan as much as you want. You can spend millions of dollars. Your wedding might not be what you thought it was. The pressure might honestly make you feel weird about it. CNBC found that there are more millennial brides saying it wasn't really worth spending the money on. I think we're seeing a rubber band effect from the over-the-top, really Pinteresty weddings. Now it's becoming really trendy to just elope, go to the courthouse, still take cool photos, and maybe have a smaller, nice dinner with your friends and family. And I think this is really cool for people who don't see the value and don't want to have a huge wedding, but still want to make it a special day. One thing people might not realize about weddings if you've never been in one, like if you've never been a bridesmaid or something like that, is just how much of the day is dedicated to taking photos. Like half the day I feel is getting ready and taking photos, at least for like the, the bride side, um, which is not a very fun activity in my opinion. So much of the day is spent just taking photos and posing. It's kind of crazy. It, it's very dystopian how much time you spend fake laughing for photos and videos. And look, I've done the wedding videos and I've encouraged people to do it because the shot turns out better. And then I'm editing this and I'm like, these people weren't having as much fun as I'm making the video look like. I know that's so like effed up to say, but it's true. I have shot and edited some wedding videos where I'm like, I honestly think I'm making this day look more fun than I think they actually had. In many ways, weddings are performances. I thought this was interesting what this girl said on Reddit. She said, as a divorcee, I couldn't agree more. I had one wedding and I'm very disillusioned with the whole song and dance. People wanna go on and on about how it's your day, but it's not. You're merely the entertainment, the main event and you get to foot the bill for everyone to eat, drink, and then promptly forget the whole thing. If I ever get remarried, I will be eloping or just going to the courthouse, then possibly having a casual party afterward with friends and family. In some ways, it's just going back to its roots. Weddings used to be a little more casual than they are now. After you've been to a lot of them, they definitely start to mesh together more and feel the same. But I feel now having gone to so many, some of them do just feel like a performance. I'm not like hating on this stuff, but I don't know. I thought that was an interesting take. And then there's the posting photos after the wedding. People pay a lot of money for these photos, so I get it. Have your moment, post the photos. And honestly, I wanna see them. I wanna see the wedding photos. Like if it's a wedding I didn't go to, I wanna see, I wanna scroll through, like it's fun. A lot of them are very pretty photos, like they're they're cool. But um, I don't wanna see them every month. I feel like so many people now, it's like they're posting like flashback to my wedding every single month. I'm like, I do not care anymore. It does make it feel like people are getting these photos taken and having weddings in general kind of more for social media than for themselves some of the time. I like to see the photos, but I don't like seeing them every month, to be honest. Like, I'm gonna mute you if you do that. Let's talk about not going to weddings. RSVPing, no hearts. Because I do see a lot of the brides reply to people complaining about wedding culture these days saying, then just don't go. And honestly, I do agree. That is kind of the best thing to do a lot of the time. Like if you do have an issue with how someone is having a wedding, if you're gonna have to spend too much for it, maybe don't go. I think sometimes, I, I do think this is good for everyone to remember, you do not have to go. You don't have to spend the money doing it because it's, it's not free. You actually are gonna shell out probably at least a few hundred dollars total to go to this thing. So think about if you want to do that. You don't have to. I've heard the argument that if the friendship can't survive someone RSVPing no, then it wasn't really a friendship that was gonna last anyway. Most people understand if someone can't make it for one reason or another, especially if they don't live in the same place. Like if you used to be coworkers with someone and now you live in different cities, I think they're gonna be okay if you don't make it. But there are cases where it's like you just socially can't say no. If it is a sibling, if it's a very close friend, obviously, this is where it's harder to say no. People do get in situations where they have close friends that expect them to just spend a lot of money on their wedding and it's a close friend and so it's like they socially like sure you can say no but it would cause a rift it would same thing with siblings this is when people feel more pressured to spend the money when they don't really want to it feels like they have to while you technically can always just say no 
I do think there are situations where it's like socially, it, it's kind of unacceptable. Because wedding invites used to say something like, Megan and I are getting married on October 26th at the church down the street, reception to follow. We really hope you can make it. If you can't, we understand. Now, wedding invites today sound a little like this. Megan and I are getting married in Turks and Caicos. We reserved a block of hotel rooms at a discounted rate of just $1,750 a night. And if you do not make it to our wedding, we will hold it against you for the rest of our lives. I even have some friends where I'm not as close with them anymore, but I feel like if I didn't go to the wedding, it would be like the nail in the coffin on that friendship, you know? So overall, yes, you can RSVP now, but let's understand that sometimes you just like kind of can't. Wedding gifts are another thing I find very interesting now because as people are getting married later, people are now getting married closer to 30 rather than closer to 20, but they're still registering for gifts as if they don't have their own apartment and life already set up. I think wedding gifts made a lot of sense back in the day when people were like 18 to 20 getting married and then they were gonna move in together and they needed to buy all this stuff and it's expensive, but now it's like, it's two people that already have all that stuff anyway. What could they possibly need? Some wedding registries, I'm like, you're asking for a $600 Dyson vacuum? I feel like if I was getting married, I would be like, don't get me a gift. I already have stuff. Now, if you're not in that case where you don't have that stuff, I do think then it does make more sense, but almost every wedding I've been to, I'm like, I know you guys already have all this shit. To me, wedding registries feel just very, fueling consumerism but since this is a standard and like a thing that people do people register for stuff anyway on the other hand i see why people do it though they're spending so much on their wedding and registries are a thing so you might as well get something out of it <laughs> i don't want to sound like i'm actually judging anyone that has a registry because i know that basically everyone does i just think the standard of it in general is really weird in this day and age i don't think that we really need it anymore basically every wedding i've gone to I just contribute to the honeymoon fund. I just give them money. And then there's also bridal showers. I've actually never gone to a bridal shower because I always live in a different state than the wedding I'm going to. I'm not cheap though, you guys. I'm still contributing. I want to offset my cost of being at the wedding. That's what I want to do. But I don't know if people really need more plates and coffee cups and stuff. I also have some kind of judgy hot takes that we'll go through. I just thought this would be kind of fun to do. I don't want to offend any anyone. These are just my opinions. And do whatever you want at your wedding. You know, like it really is your wedding. I respect people that make it unique. Like do what you want. Okay, but these are just my, my hot takes. I think Think that the garter toss is weird. I think that is just, I wouldn't do it. I think it's weird. I think the flower bouquet toss is still kind of cute though. I think that bridesmaids dresses should be like about a hundred dollars or less. Definitely no more than 200. Destination weddings need to have multiple hotel options. I've heard of people having destination weddings where there's only one hotel available and it's like $2,000 a night. That That's straight up rude actually. Tipping wedding vendors, no, not if they own their own business, they can bake it into the cost. Yes to like the bartenders and the servers and such. If you're having a black tie wedding, that's cool. But if you're also having a buffet, that is a more casual thing. This is probably my judge's hot take yet, but I just let people wear more casual stuff then. These are things that I've seen at weddings recently that I really like. A handwritten note when you get to the dinner table. I've gone to a few weddings now that have done this and it's just a class act. The bride and groom literally write a handwritten note for each person that I've gone with a little memory. Like I actually love that. It feels very personal and a fun little surprise for your guests and also it's pretty much free to do like you can get some cards they don't need to be that expensive another trend i like is bridesmaids dresses where people are just wearing what seems like dresses they might already have that are like a similar color scheme that makes sense for a lot of personality types but i think the micro wedding trend is also really great too you can have a really luxurious wedding that way and not spend a ton of money i've also even heard of people booking an airbnb for the weekend and having kind of a wedding type weekend event i do also like the multi-day wedding trend i went on a two-week wedding trip in south africa and it was so much fun and it felt like unique weddings people going to Europe, Italy. I've actually heard it's less expensive to rent a villa in Italy and have a wedding there than the cost of a wedding in the US. Of course, then that is kind of a burden on flights for friends and family. But if you have friends and family that are willing, like 
I don't know. I think that's a cool excuse to get everyone to take a fun trip. This is random, but I think a cool wedding would be chartering one of those yachts in Croatia, like that one that I went on. You can fit 30 people on that for $100,000 for the entire week. Just have a week long bash. Like let's say you are gonna sink $100,000 into a wedding. I would rather spend it chartering one of those yachts in Croatia and telling my friends and family they can come on it. That sounds more fun to me, in my opinion, than an actual wedding. That is my take on wedding culture. I think overall, we need to just take a little bit of the pressure off of weddings. A lot of them feel similar to influencer events. They feel like they are for Instagram. They're for the photos. I don't think they need to be that extravagant to still be a really fun time. And I hope that people just don't feel too pressured to spend more on a wedding than they can afford to. Because trust me, I have filmed some bigger weddings where people are definitely spending a lot of money. It doesn't mean that they're having a better time than someone that is having a more simple wedding. It really is more about the people there. All the photo ops, all the little decor pieces, the flower arrangements, people don't really remember it except for you. It's more about the people there celebrating with you. I honestly think a lot of people enjoy their weddings more when they cut their guest list a little bit. It makes it a lot less expensive and a little more of a relaxed feel where it's honestly easier to enjoy. I say all of this being someone who is not married. I've never had a wedding. I'm not planning a wedding. I have no intention of getting married anytime soon, honestly. Just because I'm not like planning a wedding doesn't mean it doesn't affect me because I'm still spending money on my friends' weddings. I'm still attending them and I have filmed some in the past, but I'm retired from that. I'm not doing that anymore. Okay, of course, as always, I wanna hear from you guys. If you have gotten married, what did you like about your wedding? What what did you regret? What did you feel like was a waste of money? What was very worth the money? Spill, tell me everything. I wanna know. Let's have a discussion in the comments as we always do. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.